buzzword of 2020 or the buzz phrase or the buzz title digital retailing. Some have made a stance already. No, it's remote retailing. Some have made a stand. No, it's virtual selling. Come on, guys. Well, we're talking about the same thing here. Did we approach digital retail? See, because again, sometimes it feels like it's a little too in a vacuum. All customers on the face of the planet want to buy online. And then I look at my dear sweet mother-in-law who still believes that if she does not specifically click the sign out button on her Yahoo mail account, that her, her emails start floating into the ether. She will not buy a car online like that. That's she still drives around Las Vegas, paying her bills. Oh, I got to pay my Macy's card. And then I got to <laughs> drive 45 minutes away to Nordstrom's and I got to, you know what I mean? Like, so how do we actually navigate digital retail, the topic of digital retail in a way that makes sense um, versus, I guess, maybe this broad stroke of like, no, everybody's going to buy cars online. It's a good question. And I think really what it comes down to is just offering a flexible experience. Mm -hmm. To your point, not everybody's going to do it. Um, and that's why in a lot of ways, the term digital retailing, I, I just think is... Um, it's a little, it's a buzzword for sure. It's overrated because I think people immediately think, oh, e-commerce, everybody's going to do this 100% online. Um, but it's really just retail and how do we digitize the process, not how do we, you know, get every consumer on the face of the planet to buy this way. And so it's really about having the option and making sure, and this is something I feel really passionate about, making sure it's consistent with your in-store experience. You know, this is where I think my marketing background comes in full force. You never want to put a message out to the universe that you cannot deliver upon. It's actually worse to put it out there and not deliver on it than to not have ever put it out there to begin with. And so that seamless experience, that consistency of what you do online to connecting that to that in-store experience is so vital. And it's up to the consumer to choose how much they do online and, you know, what they come into the showroom to do with you in person, if they can, right? right. We're still living in a COVID world. Sure. Um, but, but having done, if I am that type of consumer that wants to do a lot of it online, if I come into the showroom and I cannot pick up where I left off, or you have this Groundhog's Day experience where the, the dealership's like, uh, can you fill out a credit app again? Um, you've lost the trust of the, of the consumer who spent the time. So it's about being flexible. It's about being able to handle you know, um, your relative that, you know, drives around to Macy's and right. <laughs> pays your bills, yeah. um, yeah. as well as the millennial that's just going to want to do all of it online and everybody in between. It's a spectrum, right? So we need to be flexible enough. I do think that there's still a huge advantage to having the dealership and letting people come and kick the tires and take delivery of the vehicle and all those things. That is actually our competitive advantage as dealerships, uh, right? Because there's players out there that um, are selling online, but they, you can't do that. So how do we take advantage of that at the same time that we're deploying all these, all this optionality for the consumer to do it the way they want to buy? Yeah, I love that. I'm really glad you brought up in-store process as well. I feel deeply that what we typically do, right? And, and this is coming from a place of love, my, my beloved DPB gang. Okay. You know, you know, this is coming. I, I don't bring things up just for the sake of, but you know, NADA is going to roll around. Everybody's going to be promoting digital retail. And I'm not knocking you, but you, these dealer owners, GM stakeholders, they're going to roll through and be like, we uh, obviously we need this and they're going to buy it with the hopes that it's going to lasso the sun, the moon, and the stars for them. They're going to implement it. Then they're going to say it doesn't work. Then they're going to, and, and we're in this perpetual cycle of vendors in the car business, just do stuff to make more money. And then, and then vendors in the car business will be like, no, nah, you know, and I'm not trying to make dealers sound negative here. Obviously, you know, my intent here, but that's traditionally, historically, that's what we've seen. We just buy into the buzz. So I love that you brought up in-store process. And I'm curious about what your recommendations would be for a store that's thinking through this and going, hey, I, you know, I love what Michelle's saying. We, we, we have to be flexible. It makes sense that we need to provide the option, that there is a spectrum. What, 
what do you recommend they do to lean into it versus having it and trying to figure it all out after the fact and, you know, not connecting the dots that process and experience and all of that still matters? Yeah, no, I think it's a great question. And um, we're actually in the middle of doing a uh, digital retail master certification uh, with with the driving sales organization uh, focused on this. But I think the thing that really needs to be looked at is the current sales process. Um, And, you know, when you're implementing this in order to create that consistency, the unique thing about digital retailing is that it truly does touch everyone within the variable ops side in some way, right? You can limit it. You can, you don't have to boil the ocean so you can start in small groups, but it's some way it's going to touch your, your internet BDC. It's going to touch your showroom team. It's going to touch your sales manager. It's going to touch your F&I team. So you really do have to think about how do I sell today? What is my current sales process? What am I trying to accomplish? Right. And, and for a lot of people, it is just what you just said. It's about modernizing the experience, but there are other things happening at the store that, that this also can solve. So really what are my challenges with my current process? And if I could wave a magic wand, it's one of my favorite questions, the wave a magic wand, what would I change? And, and that work is, is hard. You have to stop and really think about that. But we know that the number one thing that leads to success, which is a retailing after, you know, we've implemented thousands of, of dealerships um, on our platform, is that when they sit and they strategize and they think about their sales process and they have somebody in charge who's going to sort of keep everybody accountable those are the stores that are most successful because they have the buy-in from the team. They've sort of mapped it out. They've told everybody how it's going to, you know, evolve their role. And now they've, they've got this sort of streamlined process that takes the technology into consideration right. versus just having it on the side as like a, a plug-in, you know, we'll, we'll just sell cars on online and we don't need to touch anything. And I'm not saying to completely blow everything up, in fact, we have a favorite question we ask often is when they say, well, how do we deliver cars? Well, how do you deliver cars today? Like <laughs> right. so much of it is like, well, how do you do it today? Because it may not be that different, but it's just going through that exercise of thinking about each step and how you're going to use the technology to do that as part of your process. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Uh, let me ask you this. I'm looking at my current sales process. From your vantage point, what are some key items I should be looking for that would give me an indication of something that needs to be worked on versus maybe I'm doing okay? I think friction points. That would be what I would be looking at. Where where is the friction? So we know that consumers really don't want to spend as much time as they usually do at the dealership. And, um, and I think a lot of that is because our process is so linear, right? When you come into the showroom, you, you do a needs and ass- assessment with that customer, you do a test drive, you come back and, and you look at your different options, you do your first pencil, you, you go to the sales manager. It's, a, it's so linear that salesperson never leaves the customer's side, but they're going back and forth. So all that back and forth is what's causing time. Mm -hmm. And so, and then, you know, F and I, another sort of friction point of a time, it tends to be a friction point. And so I'd be looking at where are those points where you're spending a lot of what I call downtime um, waiting because you're waiting for another, you know, person at the store in order to get something accomplished. And that sort of leads into this whole productivity exercise because this, downtime that we are, you know, talking about as friction points is exactly where the technology can help. So when you think about, you know, the the technology and and being able to empower customers to do more online, um, you all of a sudden as a salesperson are free to work with multiple customers at once. You're no longer you know, chain to one, I say chain to one customer, it's going to come out really bad. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But, um, you know, that one, one-on-one connection where you're sure. spending three or four hours with a customer. Um, now you can encourage some that behavior ahead of time. And so you can put the customer, the, the customer actually wants to be put to work. So you might as well try to encourage them to do as much as they're comfortable with ahead of time, because you can then work multiple customers at once immediately remove the friction because you've taken time out of the process in the showroom. 
And so I think, you know, there's not a lot of win-wins in this life, but I do think that this is one of them. And what we're seeing from the those that are using the technology is that their salespeople are able to sell more per person because they're able to do so much of this, you know, from a remote capacity, working and guiding the customer through the process. I'm Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. If you're ready to make big changes in your life and career and want to connect with positive, nurturing automotive professionals, join my exclusive DPB Pro community on Facebook. That's where we share information, ideas, and content that isn't shared anywhere else. I can't wait to meet you there. Thanks for listening.